All right, folks. Hello. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad to see you. Okay, it is uh, Thursday. It is the day after the patch. And this is indeed the deep dive into Pure. And I'm not going to pronounce her last name because I will butcher it now. Uh, you can see her to the right of my lovely face. Where should I put my head? How about top left? There we go. So in this video, we're going to deep dive into Pure. And we're going to go over her kit. We're going to go over her gear. Uh, I am briefly going to show instances where she is good in the game. And then we're going to end it with final thoughts. And hopefully I can answer all your questions on this character. TLDR, is she good? Yes, she's good. Is she great? Maybe. Testing will tell. Is she bad? Definitely not. I would say she's... I'm just going to give her a grade of a B for now until we get further proof of her... Of her goodness, of her uh, viability outside of the collab team and other team comps. But I do see that she's got a unique kit, which we'll get into. And I think she's uh, she can do some interesting things in this game as a standalone unit. So, without further ado, let's go straight to the deep dive. Purin, all shiny and gold. Immortal 0x30. Don't care about that. All right. Let's dive in. So, basically, the cinematic has been just reskinned, and now here's her part. So, yeah, don't know anything about this character um, because I didn't watch this series. It was pretty bad. I guess it's an okay cinematic. So she's a hacker. Okay, all right, Purin. So we're gonna read her kit first, uh, and then we're gonna get into gearing, and then I'm gonna show you a little bit of gameplay, because right now, um, I don't really have a whole lot of time to test today, but I do wanna get this video out today. So, let's dive into her kit first, her ultimate. She is an energy character. Uh, now there's an active and a passive component to this ultimate. So one's going all the time, one's a passive, and this, and then one is on activation. So this is the first kind of ultimate we've seen like this. So the active part is Purin. I'm not going to try to pronounce her last name at all through this. Changes the perception of pain of all creatures, increasing damage taken by enemies, and reduces damage taken by allies by 8 to 20%. And I do believe that goes up to 10 to 25% at level 3 that is a commander boost so 8 to 20% uh, affected by her accuracy maximum at 200 accuracy so at minimum uh, you're going to want her to have 200 accuracy this effect lasts for 10 seconds so increasing the damage taken and, incre and increasing the damage dealt so basically that's a 40% swing because the enemies are taking 20% more damage, but the allies are also dishing out 20% more damage. So 40%, that's a big old buff. That is actually a pretty good ultimate. So that's the active part, the passive part. She can't use basic attacks. Uh, she will not attack at all. Uh, when Purin is on the battlefield, all allied heroes then deal 10% more damage. This skill's damage boost effect is calculated last after all of the other calculations that modify damage for a team get calculated. So keep in mind, that's just 10% more damage. That's not 10% more attack. That's just a straight 10%. And if you look at the talent effect, the damage passive boost is increased to 20% in the collab event, which means that's a dead skill after this is over. So we're just going to say 10%, uh, just a 10% more damage just for using her on the field. Uh, the exclusive effect uh, enhancement, when activated, enemy heroes have a 40% chance to be stunned by two seconds. So that's affected by accuracy as well, Me, which means that 200 accuracy makes it an 80% chance and 300 accuracy makes it a 100% chance. So right from the first ultimate or first ability that we read, we can determine that we want her to have between 200 minimum and 300 maximum accuracy. Now, I want to mention this talent effect. Damage boost uh, passive is increased to 20% in the soul incursion, incursion collab event. That's very, very unfortunate. That means that after this event is done, that is a dead talent. 
at least with Holentis, it is always in Hell Arena. And Hell Arena is always going to be around. This collab event is probably gone bye-bye after this, which means this talent is effectively useless in two weeks. Her first common skill, Purin restores 150 energy to the ally with the highest attack. Talent modifier reads, when activating this skill and the target has energy below 400, additionally restores 50 energy, which means that if they're below 400, they're getting 200 energy. It takes 600 energy to reach an ultimate, which means that this common skill is pretty much going to give instant ultimates. Well, unless they're at zero, right? So say like Dom just did his ultimate, then this will give him um, energy up to 200 which is one third of an ultimate, but very, very cool ability. This is basically like Rez, uh, but to a little bit of a lesser degree, but she's gonna be doing this ability more often because it's her common skill. Exclusive effect, enhancement, increases the damage of the next ultimate skill, because energy means ultimate, the next ultimate skill by 10%. So not only is she gonna boost the person's ultimate bar, she's also gonna give them a straight 10% damage buff on to if if their ability causes damage like if and it should but say like your res has the highest attack it's it's not gonna do anything you get me capiche silent knight the next common ability so purin stuns the target enemy with the highest attack and increases their damage taken by 20 percent for four seconds not bad okay okay talent effect doubles the damage taken by enemy heroes in the soul incursion collab event. Another dead skill. This is something you're gonna use for the next two weeks. And then it is useless. That's not good. Exclusive effect, enhancement, 40% chance affected by her accuracy to lower the target's attack by 15% for eight seconds. That's good. So that means that 200 accuracy for an 80% chance, 300 accuracy for a 100% chance. So not only is she going to stun the enemy with the highest attack for four seconds, she's also going to increase the damage they take by 15% for eight seconds. Don't know how long it's gonna take her to cycle in between these abilities, but um, eight seconds is fairly long, uh, which means that, um, yeah, this, this little lady between her ultimates and this can make the enemies take a lot more damage. Her passive cyborg reconstruction. So while Purin is on the battlefield, just again, while she's there, all allied units recover 1.5% of Purin's max HP every second. So she doesn't have an active heal. She has a map-wide AOE heal of 1.5% of her HP. Keep in mind, my uh, my Purin has 2.5 million HP in this current gear set. Um, what's 1% of that? Uh, I think that's, what, 25,000? 25,000, right? Because a, th- a, thou- a thousand, wait, no. On a million, a thousand is 1%. So, one and a half percent, let's say 2% of 2 million is 4,000. So a, a decent heal, a decent heal every second, every second. That's not bad, actually. Uh, talent modifier reads, if a public security section nine hero dies, all allied units will immediately be healed by 40% of her max HP. So if someone dies, just they all get a big, huge heal to top them all up. And then the exclusive effect, while Purin is on the battlefield, all allied heroes restore 10 energy every second. Wow. So not only is her ultimate, or her her first, con- not even her ultimate, her first common skill, giving them a bunch of energy for their ultimates, but they're going to receive 10 energy every every second, meaning that in, 100, in 10 seconds, that's uh, 100 energy, which is a good chunk of an energy bar. Um, and that's the kit. Very, very cool. A very, very interesting unit. I don't like the parts that are exclusive to the collab event because uh, then that just renders those those parts useless unless they're going to bring back the battle every once in a while, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but maybe. Uh, very, very cool kit. 
Uh, let's go look at her exclusive right now. It is an HP damage reduction damage amp, even though damage amp is useless since she causes zero damage. That's funny. That is a dead stat. But damage reduction HP is cool. You see I have her at X30 already. If we go down to the very bottom, the energy regeneration part of her passive is her X30. So she does have a good X30 in my opinion. She is probably worth X30ing. Her and Matoko are the two you want to use your X30 or Red Runes on out of the collab units. So before we look at the gear, uh, well, let's just go to the talents right away. Let's see if there's anything interesting. Uh, when casting a common skill to buff an ally, gain 50 energy. Cool. Right on. Good. After performing a basic attack, even though she doesn't perform basic attacks. Come on, guys. Come on. That is horrible. After performing a basic attack, she doesn't have one. When participating in killing an enemy, she can't because she can't do damage. Oh my god. After casting an ultimate, immediately reduce the remaining cooldown time of all abilities by 20%. Okay, that's cool. But guys, these two? Come on. That is, that is lazy. You guys just plugged just some random support uh, sub-talents sub in there and just said, cool. Didn't even read it. That is... That is lazy. I'm going to call that out. That is lazy. All right. What do they recommend? So the game recommends HP accuracy and damage reduction, right? Because a lot of her kids can revolve around that 200 to 300 accuracy window. Uh, she obviously wants HP because that's what her healing is based off of. And then damage reduction because the support, you obviously don't want her to die. The sets that they're recommending are vigorous, abundant, and rebirth. So uh, basically HP and then two healing sets. Um, I am going to kind of um, recommend those. And that is what the game recommends. Prototypes, of course, it's the healing prototypes. Okay, so now let's get into my gear recommendations. I think you can gear Purin in basically three ways. So I don't have a starter build. If you're right at the beginning of the game and you don't have access to Katozi and Triangle gear sets, then just run Vigorous with Hawkeye. Okay, so you want eight HP sets and then a Hawkeye set. But how you want to gear her is you want to go HP on the gloves. Obviously for substats, you want HP accuracy and damage reduction. Yes, you do want those. I would say attack speed as well. Although I don't know if, since she doesn't have a basic attack, I don't know if attack speed is worthwhile. I wanna just look at something really quick while here. Let's, oh yeah, I can't even, oh, let's look at the, let's, let's look at the game's definition of attack speed. Affects the attack speed of basic attacks. She doesn't She doesn't have a basic attack. All right, so that, I don't think attack speed does anything for her. Oh, that is horrible. Every 10 points of this attribute increases basic attack speed and frequency by 1%. Oh, that's not good. All right, let's just look. Uh, where was that again? Right, was it, was it here? Uh, passive, pa yeah, Purin cannot use basic attacks. Okay, so what that means is basically this uh, speed set, unequip, bye bye don't want that. Okay, okay, I'm good we got that, so good we got that already right now. So you don't, attack speed does nothing for Purin, nothing. So here's how you wanna gear her. You wanna gear her if you're beginning game, Vigorous and Hawkeye, you want HP on the hands, you want accuracy on the helm, and then you want HP on the boots. You could go damage reduction, but I think HP is going to be more beneficial to you. Um, obviously, for substats, across the board, you want HP, accuracy, and damage reduction. So accuracy head, HP, HP. You see even this set, I've got 176 accuracy plus. That means that I actually have plus 49. So I have over 200, right? You want to make sure your accuracy is in between 200 and 300. So HP hands, accuracy helm, HP boots, and then up top you see I got damage reduction, HP substats, HP damage reduction substats, uh, accuracy damage reduction substats. So that is one way you can gear her. This is this will uh, increase her healing uh, by what does it do? When casting heal skills increases healing by twenty five percent, and then she's going to also recover her own 5% um, of her own max HP up to 20%. Okay, so Rebirth obviously is good. If you don't have Rebirth, then you can use Abundant from, um, what's it call it? Ancient Altar. That'll work too. Uh, just But this would be your ideal heal slash accuracy speeds or accuracy set. 
What you could do too though, is you could go with a resonant set and Hawkeye. What is resonant gonna do? It's gonna give you a 40, uh, 40 points of accuracy, but it's also gonna give you an initial uh, 300 ultimate energy, energy. It's gonna give you 300 energy to start. This is going to help you ramp up that damage amp, damage uh, reduction. Basically, yeah, damage amp, damage, it's all damage amp in a way. It's gonna ramp up her ultimate really, really quick. Although you're only gonna be able to do that once, right? You're only gonna get that boost once. So if we look at my stats, you see um, the, the accuracy on this set's actually higher because I'm getting that 40 accuracy from um, the resonant set. My damage reduction is lower though, but if you look at the, at the HP, the HP doesn't really change and that's just the HP from the gear. So if we go like this, you see 2.5% on the rebirth set, 2.4, a million HP on the resonance set. So really the HP doesn't matter. So what you really wanna pick from is the initial, I gotta give my allies um, a whole bunch of attack boost and then hinder the enemies, or I wanna do more healing. Because remember, she's only gonna be giving 1.5% of her max HP every second, but this will tack on an extra 30%, whatever that turn, whatever that turns out to be, right? So you gotta pick heals versus basically speed. This I would probably run in PVP, if you're gonna run pure in PVP. This I would probably run in PVE because PVE fights are usually a little bit longer. So those are the two gear sets that I would recommend. Now, that's basically her kit, that's her gear, her talents, what not. Where can you use her? Well, obviously, if you are watching this video uh, two weeks or within two weeks from launch, you can use her in here. Insufficient security cards. Okay, well then let's go like this. Right now, you wanna use all four collab units and Dominic. So then what do I want her to have her in? Healing doesn't really matter, so I would probably run her in this set, right? Since. Speed does nothing since a speed set buffs attack or basic attack and she doesn't have basic attack. So you're gonna obviously run her in here. Come on YouTube notifications, go away for 20 minutes. You're gonna obviously run her in here. This is the, the place where she's gonna shine the most. Uh, but I did do a, a little bit of testing, a little bit of testing and I'm gonna show you one instance of where I tested her. So if we go to the Crimson Abyss, Let's do that. Stage 15. My previous best time was 31 seconds. Now, my previous best teams, I was either instead of Purin, I was either running Turesh, you know, to tank and to boost melee damage, or I was running Rickert or Bailey. Okay? So, what this is going to do is we're getting... What do I have Fiona in? Fiona's in a speed set. Okay, don't know if that is necessary. Since the basic attacks don't do a whole lot, let's go like, let's go heal set. All right, heal set, don't think heal set does not anything, but let's see. Okay, so previous best score or best speed was 31 seconds. So I'm putting her in the resonance set because I want her, since the battle's gonna be really, really quick, I want her to get her first ultimate off really fast. So let's go. And since Dominic or Cora, I'm not sure which one has the highest attack. Uh, I think it's I think it's Dominic, but who knows? But she's going to be buffing them, giving them more energy. Let's just watch. I'm trying to watch. I think I just saw Cora. Actually, you know what? No, it is Cora. It is hands down Cora. So what she's doing, since I run Cora, since I have her, I am, she is getting the increased energy uh, rate, or the increased ultimate bar. And what was that? 27 seconds again. All right, so that kind of highlights that she can be used outside of the collab team. You know, she does have some interesting Diane, she does do some interesting things for damage dealers, that's for sure. So you could run her, I would say, with assassins. You could run, although assassins just need Fiona, really. I think you could run her, obviously, you could run her with the collab units. 
but you could plug and play her. You could put her with energy if you don't want if you if you want like Miranda and her maybe put Nord up front. You could run her with hunters, you know, because then she would be drastically increasing who uh, Rebecca's ultimate spar. You could plug and play her in a lot of places and, and, and just test her out and see how she does. I think she's an okay unit. She's not groundbreaking, but she's interesting. The fact that she does not have any active healing and she does not have any attack. So um, I guess I should save this for final thoughts, which we'll, <laughs> we'll go to now. And we're back. Okay. I don't want that music. I got the cola music on in the background. Oh, well, I guess we're stuck with it. Okay, so final thoughts on uh, Purin. Let's go find her. Not summon support. It starts with an S. Touch the nose. Okay, there she is. Final thoughts on Purin, I would say that the order of how you want to get these characters, these collab characters, is Matoko first, then Purin, then Tachikoma, then Bato. Sorry, Vanguard suck again. So Purin, I would say I would still give her about a B grade. Uh, we haven't really seen the full-fledged what she's capable of. It's day one, that'll come out in the future. But I have seen screenshots of some pretty interesting comps beating some pretty interesting teams. That being, and I'm looking at you, pal. Uh, he sent me, he's got it pretty much maxed out, but Matoko, Purin, Fiona. Matoko, Purin, Fiona, Dominic, and who else? Matoko, Purin, Fiona, Dominic, oh, and then Helentis beating a maxed out Caraxia assassin team. But, so there's an option for you, as Pal said, there's an option for people that don't want to spend 3k. You can beat that lead paperweight with a really decked out Matoko, but you've only got, you don't even got a, two weeks to pull on her because she's gone. You're going to have to get Matoko up with jeans, and you're going to want her like a mortal 3, 4, 5, so yeah. So Purin uh, is the, the facilitator that makes that work, so... Uh, yeah, she's a, she's a good unit. You guys, uh, if you want to pull on her, I don't feel bad. Um, if you can't get both units, uh, uh, get pure in if you can. Just just make sure you get a copy because I don't know when these heroes are coming back around. So, that's all I'm going to leave you with. Uh, the word of the day is burn because I doused my finger in... You can't see it because of the camera. But I doused my finger in some scalding butter as I was sautéing some mushrooms. Because I'm an idiot. So put burn down in the comments. Tell me what you think about Purin. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen. Catch you in the next one. I just said that. Cheers, peace. Bye-bye.